Welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast, your home for weekly information and inspiration to help you get the graduate job of your dreams. Welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast with your host, James Curran. The Graduate Job Podcast is your weekly home for all things related to helping you on your journey to finding that amazing job. Each week, I bring together the best minds in the industry, speaking to leading authors, entrepreneurs, coaches and bloggers who bring decades of experience into a bite-sized weekly 30-minute show. Put simply, this is a show I wish I had a decade ago when I graduated. For episode 51, I've gone global in my search to bring you the best careers advice, as I'm joined from Singapore by Australian Amber Brown, author of the excellent Finding Your Path, a guide to life and happiness after school. In this interview, we explore her book and the different pathways you can explore after university. We touch upon exploring the world, starting your career, continuing your learning through to finding your own way. We delve into why you should set goals once you finish university, the importance of setting off to travel and why you should always be working on your own personal project. If you're feeling stuck at a career crossroads and you're not sure what to do or you've recently graduated and are feeling lost, then this is an episode you won't want to miss. As always, all links to everything we discuss and a full transcript are available in the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash findingyourpath. Right, let's not mess about and jump straight into my chat with Amber Brown. I'm very excited today to be speaking to Amber Brown, all the way from Singapore, author of the inspirational and absolutely beautiful book, Finding Your Path, A Guide to Life and Happiness After School. Amber, welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast. Thank you so much, James. I'm excited to be here today. And today we're going to dive into your book, Finding Your Path, and explore some of the pathways that listeners can take. But before we start, though, would you like to tell listeners a little bit more about your path and the path that you've paved and how you came to write this book? Yeah, sure, definitely. So the book started as a, a result, I guess, of me finishing school and having no idea what I wanted to do. I was really anxious and um, I had this a lot of pressure on myself around what I was going to do after school. I remember at the time everyone saying, doesn't matter, you know, you'll work it out. But I guess it really, it mattered to me. I was, I was honestly just torn between all the options and um, I felt that there wasn't a lot of support out there for me to make that decision. So um, I initially, I had a gap year and um, thought that I was going to, on that gap year, you know, work it out. I was going to come back after the year of traveling around Europe and different parts of America with a friend and have it all sorted. But I returned with not um, much more clarity than I'd left, unfortunately. And so I then went in to do a degree. I did a broad degree uh, where I majored in a science, um, arts and also a language. And um, during those studies, I, I realized how much I enjoyed studying psychology. So I then I went on to take more subjects and ended up majoring in psych. Um, I then went on to major in positive psychology. So finishing uni, I've worked in different jobs, um, all psychology based. I've worked as a private investigator for people um, with depression or anxiety in the workplace. Um, And I would go and meet with them and write reports for the insurance companies. And then um, after that, I moved to Singapore and was working with the Australian government in the consular team, so working with any Australians that were either, you know, hospitalised or arrested or in prison, I'd go out and visit them and, yeah, just any Australian citizens in distress, which was really interesting. But um, all along, I kind of came back to this idea of uh, trying to work it out and find my own path and, and wanted to put together with a positive psychology kind of spin this notion that, you know, just keeping momentum, keeping focused on what you're interested in, I guess the benefits of that and um, yeah I was working on this book so it came together I think over the last four years and um, have self-published it last year and yeah it's been had a good response and here I am today. Oh brilliant and I have to say it's such a beautiful book so when I get books uh, for the podcast and just generally to read I'm a big scribbler in the side and always scribbling and writing notes and I found it really difficult with this one because each page is so beautiful it <laughs> felt almost like a crime to be to be scribbling <laughs> notes on the side of it so it's um yeah listeners I'll um check out my uh, social media feed on it's a graduate job podcast on Instagram there's some pictures there and also on Twitter I'll be tweeting some pictures out from the book but 
make sure you do check it out yourselves it is um, beautifully made thank you thank you very much yeah no it's actually it was designed by um, a graphic designer from Sweden actually and she's done a beautiful job I even myself it you know it took it to that next level when I looked at it I was like wow so I, I agree with you it's she's done a nice job oh no she has so after university, the final year when you're at university, you know, you're working towards your final exams, you, you get your results, you get your degree, you chuck your mortarboard hat in the air, and you can go home and there's this dawning realisation of, you know, what do I do next? And mm -hmm. it can be a really scary but equally exciting time, um, especially when you keep on getting asked the question from family and friends of, you know, what are you going to do next? Exactly. So how can you, how can you begin to... to move on from this and to think about you know what it is that you're going to do in inverted commas mm -hmm. good question so i think like i was mentioning earlier the the bottom line or the main focus of the book is really just to keep momentum and and keep focused on what you're interested in i think that we can't undervalue our interests and um, what we enjoy doing in our downtime so i think you know focus on your interests and research as much as possible you know like you said there are so many options out there but getting that information you know online there's different blogs and um, endless amounts of information on the internet and chatting with people that have done different jobs that you might be interested in you know understanding their pathways uh, as a source of information and just asking as many questions as you can I think that yeah with focusing on your interests knowing your options and and then I think I would just say something I always live by is just fake it until you make it I think you know just jump in there and and try and not let fear be in the way of that um I read a really good quote from Mike Myers the other day which has inspired me and he said he's still waiting for the no talent police to come and arrest him and I was like yes it's not just me that feels like this I think that you know no one's born a pro um, we're all beginners somewhere so really trusting on, on what you're interested in and, and trying to create that for yourself hope I didn't over overshare then but yeah that would be my no no that's um it's always good to hear and um having seen some of Mike Myers' films I think uh, <laughs> they, they might be on the way actually so, um, <laughs> um the book you know covers jobs it's got the different pathways that you talk about so uh, four different pathways so jobs travel learning and, and going your own way but I thought it was interesting that you start with uh, setting goals. Why do you think that goal setting is so important for listeners? Mm -hmm. I think that with that confusion, we can kind of get lost and lack, I guess, a bit of direction. And, and while everything is fluid and things change, I think that having goals to work towards when we do perhaps get a bit uh, down on what we're doing, you know, bring us back to to what we're working towards. Um, I think I quote, use Roy Disney's quote in the book, um, talking about the importance of values and when you know what your values are, that it helps you to make a decision. So I really wanted to bring it back to that personal personal development or you know, knowing yourself and what you are wanting long-term. You know, I, I use the example in the book of being worldly. So you know, if you're looking to explore, how can you get to do that? And putting down measurable goals that you can slowly tick off and, um, and, and to continue to keep that momentum. So I just thought it was a good starting point to start to think about where you're headed and, and get people thinking before they look at all the options. No, I completely agree. And it's such an important part. And it's so easy to, to get onto the treadmill and to just, you know, start going down one direction and you almost forget the reason why you started down that direction in the first place. Exactly, exactly. So if you if you do set the goals initially then you can always you, know, you can keep reevaluating, you know, where you're going and making sure that you're going where you want to go and is it adding to what you want to do ultimately, whether it's getting on a graduate scheme or getting on a graduate scheme for a particular company or industry, then you know you're going in the right direction. Exactly. Exactly. So the first pathway you talk about in the book is travel, and it's something that you mentioned that you did with a year out, and you know, you're based in, speaking to you from Singapore, and you've been working in America, and so it's something which is um, you know, a big part of um, big part of your life. You mentioned in the book if you're still tossing around the thought of taking this path, one thing is for sure you won't regret it. Mm. Now, why do you think this is the case with travel? Yeah, I, I strongly believe that. I think you know like you mentioned from my own experience it's something that I've 
really valued and, and grown from, from. And I think that it's just, it's not something that you can learn in a classroom or it, it is something that you, you know, there's hardships of travel, there's amazing highs of travel and these are the memories that we're creating. This is life, I think. You know, when you look back, when you're sitting in the rocking chair, when you're older, you're going to look back on all these awesome memories and um, it really shapes and defines us uh, as who we are, um, not to mention just seeing different cultures and people and just opens up your world. I, I just I can't recommend it highly enough. I agree. And uh, so I took a year out and went to Australia Did you? before uni. And then, yeah, so I spent um, seven months uh, doing voluntary work over in uh, WA and then in Victoria and took a year out after uni as well to to go out to China so mm-hmm. it's been um you know it's been part of my life and it's funny what you mentioned you never meet anyone who who says you know I oh, really really regret <laughs> going trap so is so is the other way around people going ah oh, you know I wish I'd wish I'd gone for longer or I wish I'd uh, you know wish I'd gone in the first place mm-hmm. caught the travel bug yeah so how can people begin to then narrow down the travel options the world is a world is a big place where would you where would you recommend people starting their yeah, um, I think ultimately looking at the purpose of why you're wanting to travel. Um, I think when I first finished school, like I mentioned, I was wanting a bit of time out. I didn't know what I was wanting to choose and I'd worked really hard in my final years. So, you know, having a break and a bit of downtime, exploring. And so really understanding your purpose. For me, it was yeah, exploring. But for other people, it might be that they've always had a dream to go surfing somewhere or they studied history. They might want to go and see something that they've always wanted to see. So I think understanding your purpose. Um, but also, I guess there's those realistic considerations that we have to take in, like you know how long you've got, what your budget is. So, I think it's going to be a very individual narrowing down process. But if you can list those things down and and start to work towards it, that should be a good starting point. And of course, you can always tie it in with work and go work abroad. So, I went to China to teach English and was able to itch the travel travel book there but also to help to get some great experience on my cv and something to come back and talk about when i was going through the through the interview process so as well as teaching you've also got the you know go and learn a language somewhere go to go to spain and you know learn spanish or mexico wherever it is you want to go you can you can combine the travel with also the things to improve your cv as you go along. definitely i think it's a great thing that shows on your cv that you know you're worldly that you you know you're someone that can take on different you know adapt to different cultures or even yeah just you know it can be scary to leave your current environment and and take that launch so yeah I think it says something about you as a person also and and like you said it can make you more employable in the future. And what advice would you give someone who is maybe um, a bit scared and daunted by the prospect of setting off on a big trip? I think my nan always said to me to feel the fear and do it anyway. And I think this is something that I've lived by. I think it's pretty normal to feel scared, you know, leaving your comforts and what you've always known. But I think just just take the leap. And, and like we said earlier, you won't regret it. You know, to listeners who might be just finishing university, if you if you don't go now, when are you going to go? It's only going to get harder down the line when you've got a mm. mortgage and uh, responsibilities, a proper job and uh, people in tow it uh, it gets more difficult very true very true for those that are about to set off traveling have you got any favorite top tips to make sure their trip is a success yeah um so what would my favorite top tips be i think i think finding moments to stop on the trip you know you can find yourself rushing around and you know ticking off your schedule but i think for me i really look back on those moments where i really you know soaked it up and um, also I enjoy documenting it. So, you know, taking pictures and um, writing a journal so that, you know, when you get home, I know I've I kept journals on all of my trips um, when I'm in my first year. And it's, it's awesome to be able to read over them and things I would have completely forgot. So I think, yeah, they're, they're good tips. And also I know I note in the book to ensure that you pack your passport in an, in an open mind. And I think these are probably the two most important tips when I was working with the embassy here, I, I really learnt the value of a passport. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it can be undervalued as a little few pieces of paper, but yeah, the passport and an open mind so that you can you know, meet people and it really makes a big difference, your outlook on your adventure. That's, uh, that's top tips, yeah. And uh, yeah, passport, well, uh, <laughs> it's one of the basics, but uh, it's uh, definitely worth remembering. <laughs> definitely. So moving on to the second pathway in the book, which is keep learning. Mm-hmm. 
In your opinion, what are some of the right and wrong reasons for going into postgraduate study? You know, this is again is quite individualistic, obviously, but for for someone that's considering it, if you know, you know, there's going to be people that know what they want to do. They know that they need to get a job that you have to, to go to uni or you have to do a certain course to get. And obviously go for it. That's, there's no, that's a no brainer. But then there's the people, I guess, like me, that I knew that I wanted to go on and learn something, but I wasn't actually sure what it was. And I would, in, I would encourage those people, you know, if you're up for it and you like learning, you're open to kind of finding your path along the, the adventure. I'd also encourage those people perhaps just like I did to do a, a broad degree. But I know there's certain people that will leave, finish their studies up and they just, they've done, you know, they're out. I, I, I wouldn't say that it's a blanket um, answer that everyone should do it, but there's definitely some awesome, awesome um, benefits after to finishing it. You know, I, again, I touch on this in the book, but um, going, you know, the statistics to show that you're more employable, can make higher um, salaries. Um, obviously that's not everyone, but this is just statistically speaking. And, um, I just think, you know, it's a great experience. Again, similar to travel, similar kind of benefits of meeting people and um, opening up your mind. So I think it's, a, again, a very valuable thing to have on your path. Yeah, and as you mentioned, I think it's the making sure you're doing it for the right reason. So that you that you love the subject and you really want to take your knowledge further or it's going to be crucial for the whichever career you're going down. Mm -hmm. But to come across um, some of the clients that I coach, you almost feel drawn to it because they haven't got the jobs that they wanted and they don't really know what else to do or you know parents are, are pushing them down um, the, the further study route but from personal experience when I was recruiting if I've got a candidate who's got a year's worth of experience or you know a master's degree I'd probably always go for the year's worth of work experience just because it's more practical exactly. so make sure you're doing it for the right reasons in the book, you also uh, mentioned about studying abroad, um, where you can get the benefit of travel, but also of being able to um, improve your learning and uh, get, a, get a degree somewhere else and probably be a lot cheaper than it would be at the moment in the UK or maybe in America if you went to um, somewhere else in, in Asia. So how can, um, thinking though about further study, what are the, uh, some of the ways that people can make sure that um, they make the most of their, their time studying further? I think just throwing yourself into it, um, like you mentioned, doing what you enjoy. I know from my own studies when I was doing the different different uh, or broad courses that I was applying myself a lot more to the subjects I was interested in, you know, and I guess there's a reality that there's always going to be parts of it that you don't enjoy. You know, when I was studying majoring in psychology, I was loving all the studies on people, the cases, um, and then the statistics side, I was kind of dragging my heels a little more, but I think that yeah, that comes back to the values uh, that we were referring to again earlier and knowing why you're doing it. But I think there's this, there's this huge, I don't know about yourself, but when I was at uni, there was this huge mentality of P's get degrees. And I would discourage people from implementing this, <laughs> um, that idea that you can just kind of get through and pass and that'll be fine. I think, you know, to get the most out of it, you really want to be, you know, it's costly, like you said, and if you're, you're throwing yourself in and you're learning as much as you can, you're going to take away a lot more. I've not heard of that uh, before. P's get degrees. Yeah, have you not heard of that? No, what, is, uh, what does that mean? <laughs> so P's are pass. And ah. So as long as you pass, you're going to get your degree. And it was this real mentality when I was at uni that everyone was just like, oh, it doesn't matter, you know. Or maybe it was just some people I was hanging around, but I did hear it a lot. <laughs> And I, I don't encourage it, so I, I definitely discourage that. Is it? You're not going to get the most out of it if that's your approach. Yep, no, that's uh, that's true. Oh, I've not heard that one. That's a, that's a new one for me. <laughs> Do like you mentioned, um, you talked about um, with yourself with learning as you went through the um, the course. You know where what really took your interest. So it's that thought of being flexible and you know going in with an open mind and just seeing what things really excite you and take your interest that you can you, know, you can you can take down. Uh, and, and study further and go down different routes and just being open to the things that you'll come across yeah yeah exactly I think nothing yeah nothing's going to be the same way forever you know and I think I think to be able to have that as a, um, a skill and being able to reassess where you're at is really something that you should keep up your sleeve and will help on your path keep drawing back to the path <laughs> yeah I love the quote that 
uh, you have in the book of whatever you decide to do, make sure the thought of it makes you smile. I think that's a really good uh, litmus test for if you are signing up for a, a degree or you know postgraduate study and the thought of it isn't exciting and doesn't make you happy, then you might want to reassess about is this the right thing for you to be doing. Yeah. Yes, and that really just comes back to having those moments to really understand, you know, why you're doing something. And I think that we can perhaps at times be skewed by other people's opinions on things. And, um, you know, I remember chatting with an auntie who had done some psychology and she was like, oh, don't do that. It's terrible. It's not like in the movies, you know, it's not your nice big office and fancy chair. I was like, oh, and she completely threw me off it. But the more that I went into it, I realized that that was her experience. You know, for me, I actually really liked being able to help people and I find it found it interesting different people so I think you know take on other people's experiences but also ensure that you create your own and yeah like I said what makes you smile that's the important thing so moving on to the the third pathway which is a career and one that I think post-university people are instinctively drawn towards without maybe putting the the thought into about if this is the right time for them to to go into a career now, one of my, I've got lots of favourite quotes from the book, but one of my favourite, favourite quotes is, um, nothing beats getting paid to do what you love, but nothing's more frustrating than hearing this statement when you haven't yet figured it out. So, massive question, but mm. how can listeners begin to find that job that they love? Yeah, no, um, very massive question, but it's this is the quote that I kind of thought about for quite a while in that you hear that a lot, you know, everyone's saying, oh, it's so great doing what you love, but... Like I said, yeah, how how do we find this out? I think that I, I think it's a matter of trial and error. You know, there's no kind of again quick answer to that, unfortunately. But coming back again to you know being aware of what you want to do in your downtime and trying to implement that where you can. I think you know if I look back on my jobs that I've had in the past and trying to move forward to this, I don't think there's any such thing as a a perfect job. Um, but I think there's a job that is best suited to to people. So it's really being aware of, you know, what you like about your current job and um, and what you don't like. And then in your next job, you know, eliminating the parts you don't like as much as you can and, you know, keeping the parts that you do. So, um, you know, when I was working, when I finished uni, I was like, all I wanted to do was work for a big company, you know, that was reputable. And that was it. That's all I put out for. And that was awesome until I was there for a few years. And I was like, oh, but I actually want to work with, Um, you know, in a team of people who are interesting and, you know, like-minded and, do you know what I mean? So narrowing it down through that trial and error process and uh, maybe an element of patience in that, you know, maybe we won't always get that dream job straight out of uni, but all skills can be transferable and will be applicable to our next job. So not undervaluing any one job, you know, maybe there's more parts of it that you don't like and the next one, like I said, you'll reduce those, but yeah, I think just keeping that self-awareness. No, so that's brilliant advice and really um, agree with the trial and error. I mean, a, a great way for uh, to to go through that trial and error process is to undertake work experience. It's such a powerful thing. It doesn't have to be too long, um, but just getting you into the company and finding out really what the role really entails. You, you read these glossy brochures about, especially the big companies, and you think, oh, wow, that sounds, that sounds really cool. And um, life isn't always as um, it's described in in these brochures so it's only when you actually get there and speak to people and have those conversations and find out for yourself Mm -hmm. that you realize what the job really entails and whether it's something that's going to it's going to excite you and um, keep you interested as you spend a couple of years doing it. I agree I think you know at uni a lot of it can be theory based so being able to get that experience on the side while it's also good for your CV I think that, um, yeah, it can be good just to see, you know, if the reality of it is what you think it is. And and like you said, if, if something, you know, if a position comes up, you're going to have built that reputation with them um, and then hopefully they'll consider you for, for the position if, if you're interested in it. And to go back to what we talked about earlier, just having the open mind, um, mm-hmm. I was very similar. So post, uh, when I started looking for work, my criteria was, you know, it needed to be a big company somewhere, a big company with a defined graduate scheme where I could start and you know wanted it to be two years in length so I could you know, go through it and I had almost like blinkers on for exactly what the type of starting position I, I wanted to take was I could have been more open to you know different options that were on the table with smaller companies where I could have maybe learnt in a different way and got more experience maybe quicker but 
for me it was you know I'd chosen that specific path and went just went straight for that one mm -hmm. a lot of people I coach um, have this fear that they'll almost get the wrong job mm -hmm. um, and that it won't be won't be perfect um, so as a result they keep on searching for this perfect job and and don't move forward what advice would you give people who find themselves in in that situation yeah I think this comes back to that that pressure of that we can put on ourselves and I think that oh, that's another hard question but I think that what I was mentioning before that I don't think that there is a perfect job so um, just something that's best suited to you I think again keeping open to, you know that things will change that you'll change um, one year or you know one year you might you might like something five years later you know your values and your interests may change so I think trying to ease that pressure if, if possible I think you know striving and being a high achiever is obviously a very valuable uh, skill set to have and and great I think you know being ambitious but I think trying to eliminate that wrong job idea well I think if you've made the decision to go into a job for whatever you know reasons at the time then you you've made that decision at that time and if you can get as much out of it that you that you can um like I was mentioning earlier that you know skills can be transferable trying to focus on you know how you can take that to your next job and like you were saying in terms of um committing to it for your job for a couple of years I think it's it shows commitment and that you can um see a job out you know I think giving a job a, a certain amount of time at least at least six months you know I think the first year in any job can be really challenging and um, there's a lot to learn and you know perhaps the second year it won't be as difficult there may be other elements they may be you know the the option to move into another aspect of the job or discuss that with your manager so I think yeah keeping open communication uh, around why this job job that you're in is wrong it can help you find that uh, a job that's better suited I guess and as you mentioned earlier, as long as you're moving forward, then you're going to be going in the right general direction. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, just trying to lift, I think, a, a bit of that pressure that we put on ourselves that every decision has to be perfect and forever. I think that that's um, a false perception of of how it is. And liberate you to just go and um, you know do things that excite you that you might uh, might not. Uh, want to do because you know that you can just um, you know you can afford to make mistakes and uh, as long as you're you know you're doing something exactly yeah keeping that momentum keep moving forward and definitely there's going to be jobs that we all fall into that we're like oh this isn't forever and and that's fine too you know at least you've that comes back to that trial and error at least you've tried it you know it's wrong it's process of elimination next time you won't do that one so I guess that, that's a good thing one less job to worry about considering so then moving on then to the fourth and uh, final pathway in the book is uh, you term it finding your own way. Mm -hmm. uh, what else is there? And one of the things in there that really struck me was uh, you talk about finding a personal project, mainly because maybe this podcast for me is uh, is my my personal project. What did you mean by project, and uh, why is it important to have one? Yeah, I think that having our own project and thing on the side it keeps us interesting. Um, Filling our time with things that we enjoy doing is the fundamental building blocks of happiness. So this can be, you know, I call it a project, but it can be a hobby, you know, something that you just enjoy doing, um, can be a, a whole variety of different things. But just having something on the side, I think, can be useful for a variety of reasons, you know, um, meeting people, uh, learning a new skill. Yeah, you never know well, where it'll end up, I guess you know could end up being your next business your own small business or it could just be something that you find a group of friends and um, different friendships so I think it can open up different different doors as well so so uh, a lot more interesting when you go to a party and people ask you you know what do you do yeah. you can uh, just pop in about your your personal project it um, makes you makes you sound more it interesting does, doesn't it I love chatting with people that have other things on the go and um, yeah I find it inspiring so it'd be something I recommend Another thing you talk about in this uh, final pathway is the benefits of charity work. How can it help you to find your path doing some charity work? I think that you know, working with people and giving your time to something bigger than yourself is can be really rewarding. It's also another one of the building blocks of happiness. Um, 
I've always found that I've found it to be fulfilling. Um, and I think that if you can think about what you want to spend your time doing, that again, that's going to be another another clue of, of perhaps you know your career or where you want to be spending the majority of your time. I know recently I um, was living in San Francisco for a few months at the start of the year, and I'm not sure if you, you've been there, um, but there's a lot of homeless people. And I found it quite upsetting and quite confronting at first. So I um, I did some volunteering at a homeless shelter there and it was really interesting, the, you know, the experience to be able to be in the inside of a shelter. I found it rewarding being able to give back, you know, only the small amount. But I think that in society it's important where we can. You know, I know we don't all have a lot of time, but I think that it, it gives us perspective and, and just shows Again, it can be an interesting point of conversation, like you were saying at parties, and you know you don't do it for that, but it does keep you, it keeps you interesting and and worldly and caring about more than just yourself. I can imagine it would have been uh, very interesting. So I was out in San Fran actually uh, November last year, and yeah, it's um, it's a beautiful city. Beautiful. Um, but uh, compared to say in London, the homeless people tend to be quite quiet, sleeping in, in doorways or or begging, but in uh, San Francisco, it's very in your face. Uh, so it would have been, yeah, it would have been interesting work. There. It is, isn't it? And it, I guess it's such a contrast as well, because obviously all the tech startups are there. So it's that real contrast between wealthy and, and poor, and you just, yeah, you, people just become um, just so used to it. I guess you know, people are just walking down the street, and I know that's the reality of a lot of cities. But yeah, for me, coming from living in Singapore, it was a big change. You also talk in the book about getting sidetracked. Mm. Um, how do you know you're getting sidetracked as opposed to just getting distracted? Maybe if you tell us what you mean by um, by getting sidetracked. Yeah, I think a sidetrack is something that I refer to when there's an intention to get off the, the path or your normal path that you're walking along. You know, we all we can get caught up in doing our everyday job and friends and all of those things that are everyday things that we do. But I think if you have the intention to get sidetracked, you are... Uh, you're wanting to do something off that path. So, you know, putting yourself out there, trying something you wouldn't usually do, putting down your phone or I think it just keeps a bit of variety in life. And it, it, again, coming back to that momentum and interest and the same message, underlying message. But I think that, um, uh, yeah, you never know where you'll find yourself if, with the intention to get sidetracked. And again, go back to the personal project. You never know where it's going to lead exactly. and uh, where it could take you. I liked how you you also talk in the book about the need for people to to talk about their post university plans with people. Um, why is it important for people to to talk about it as opposed to just keeping it bottled up to themselves? Yeah, I think I think talking about things makes them become a reality. So, you know, I've always used this trick to keep myself accountable. When I started writing this book, I was like, yeah, I'm writing a book, and you know, meanwhile I was sitting there staring at a screen, and then people start asking, you know, how's the book? I'm like. Mm. So I think that, you know, if you put it out there, one, you just, you make it your reality through, through talking through it. Yeah. I think if you can, if you can verbalize it, then you must, then you can do it. And linked to the next question I had was, um, you also talk about, you know, thinking big. At what stage, you know, from your personal experience, when you, you said you were going to write a book, you know, how it must have been something big to sort of say you were going to, you know, actually, I'm just going to, I'm going to write a book. Um, how did you come to that um, decision yourself? Yeah, I think there's always that element of fear that creeps in and, you know, self-doubt. And you're like, oh, I can't write a book. I'm not an author. You know, I studied psychology and there's these kind of fears that will creep in. But I think just trying to believe, um, I think thinking big, uh, it just ties on to that, that dream and and that hope and there's definitely moments where I just wanted to crawl under the sheets and be like no I'm not doing that I take it all back <laughs> but I think that keeping that belief is is what spurred me on it and the support of people around me as well so I think it's really important to not limit ourselves to what other people might expect or let that fear override the dream so I encourage everyone to think as big as they can and and believe as you just mentioned there, there are times though when you you do hit that dip where you know whether it's job searching and you you get turned down from a job that would have been perfect for you or the you you fail at the assessment center and you you do go through do go through the dip there's a good time but then there's a oh 
times where you just you know you find so difficult so i loved loved your quote you have at the end with your dream doesn't have an expiration date take a deep breath and and, and try again for people going through the dip at the moment how would you encourage them what advice would you give them yeah definitely i've been in the dip and um it can be hard to find that that inspiration when you um when you're feeling down and you have got those rejections you know i had a lot of publishers initially saying you know no and you have to come back to that belief but i think that looking to other people for inspiration i know that I, I referred to in the book um, a, a variety of different people that they were, you know, put down. And um, the examples I gave, you know, Michael Jordan, Albert Einstein, all of these, Dr. Seuss, huge names that we now we look at and they're influential. And, you know, you watch the Steve Jobs documentary. Um, and I think keeping that momentum by others that are, have gone through it. And reaching out and talking about it as well with people, I definitely recommend just being honest about it. I definitely had those moments where I would just say to friends or my partner, you know, I, why am I doing this? I'm a fraud. I shouldn't be doing it. And, and they can help pull you in line and keep you focused. And whatever it is that you feel like on the verge of giving up, um, coming back to the goals that we started, the podcast discussing and values and continue on with that momentum. Uh, you've linked that all nicely together. <laughs> yeah. Starting with the goals. Didn't even and, plan that. <laughs> yeah, and as you mentioned, though, as we talked about at the beginning, it's if you do have those goals and you do have them up somewhere and you know what you're ultimately aiming and reaching for, then it'll it's something that will just drag you through the difficult times when uh, you think, you know, what's this all for? If you, you know what the ultimate aim is, then it'll it'll help you to get there. Exactly, yeah. So unfortunately, Amber, time is running away with us. But one final question. So we've we've talked about four pathways, uh, travel, work, career and, and finding your own path. What final advice would you give to someone who thinks they all sound good and doesn't know which one to go for? Oh, you're asking me to pick one? <laughs> No, to help people to help people to so they can they can make the decision to pick one for themselves i think that oh this is the biggest question and um i think it'll come tie back into those three tips that i referred to earlier and this is what i always bring it back to you know now that i've written this book on you know what to do after high school i've had so many people coming up to me and being like you know what should i do and i wish i had some magic wand where i could be like oh you should just do this and you know send people on their way but Unfortunately, we don't and we all have to go through this journey and um, work it out for ourselves. But I think uh, back to the three main key points of just focusing on your interests, knowing your choices and then just go out and fake it till you make it. That's great advice. Amber, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. So moving on now to the weekly staple questions where I ask each guest the three questions. So Amber, question number one. What book would you recommend that listeners should read? I think recently I've finished, I'm not sure if you've read it, uh, Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic. I've not heard, not of, that heard one. of it. I loved it. I think that it was probably where I was at, so it's resonated with me. But she talks about this idea of um, you know, ideas coming to us and, and a similar kind of underlying principle of what we've discussed today in terms of um, interest and momentum and really just putting your work out there and you know nothing's going to be perfect and I think for me I could literally still be writing this book um, you know rewording sentences but she talks about just throwing things out there and yeah uh, and believing so it's it's a very inspiring read um, so for anyone that's got an idea what doesn't have to be writing could be anything their own personal project I recommend it as a motivational motivational book to get you get you out there and, and put it out and be a doer excellent and uh, that sounds like one that'd be really useful for the for me with the podcast so i will definitely check that out and uh, what so what was the uh, big magic big magic i did magic. yes big magic yeah excellent and i will link to that in the show notes so you can find links to everything we've discussed today and a full transcript at graduatejobpodcast.com slash finding your path nice uh, long url there mm. but um yeah, do do check it out Next question, Amber, what website would you recommend that our listeners use? I think an internet website that I use every day, I don't know if you use this, but it's Momentum. 
it's an app on Chrome and I've downloaded it and every day it pops up and there's a pretty new image, a quote, and then it just says, you know, what's your main focus of the day? So you write down your main focus and then there's a to-do list. So I can, I'm a, a list maker, so I put down my list of things and it just, you know, it helps to inspire me and, and get me spurred on for that day and that's something I'll use every morning. Oh, brilliant. That's a new one for me and it sounds like it will be a brilliant one for everyone listening who's applying for jobs and just needs that, uh, that focus to make sure that they uh, they get on and get things done in the day. So I will definitely check that out and get that downloaded. Awesome, yeah, that's good. And finally, Amber, what one tip can listeners implement today to help them on their job search? I think that one thing that they can do today would probably be to list down what they want in, you know, tying back into that dream job we were talking about earlier or the, the most perfect job for, for them, writing down a list of things that they want out of their job, you know, what things they enjoy about their current job, maybe three to five things, and then perhaps three to five things that they don't like. So, um, so if you're looking for your next job or you're looking for your first job, I think really honing in on what you're looking for and putting it out there um, so that you can, yeah. Start talking about it, working towards it, and it will just help to narrow down that search a little bit, a little bit finer. Excellent advice, and definitely one, listeners, that you should you should put into practice today. Amber, thank you so much for appearing on the Graduate Job Podcast. What is the best way for people to get in touch with you and the work that you do? Thank you, James. Um, so probably just through the website findingyourpathbooks.com. Uh, all the information's there, and there's a, a contact link. We're also on Instagram, um, Twitter, Facebook. So, uh, linking up with Finding Your Path on any of those social media platforms, and yeah, would love to hear from you if you have any feedback or, or questions. Um, always love hearing from readers and listeners. So, thank you so much for your time. It's been really fun chatting. No, no, thank you. And listeners, I love talks about all throughout the book. It is a beautiful book so uh, do get your hands on it yeah, you will be you'll be impressed and you'll definitely definitely worth a read amber thank you so much for appearing on the graduate job podcast thank you james see you later many thanks to amber for her time today do check out her book finding your path i guarantee it will be the prettiest book on your bookshelf a few things and quotes stood out for me and stuck with me from our chat today now having listened to those four pathways you might still be at a loss of what to do. In that case, I recommend following this quote from Amber's book. Whatever you do, check that the thought of it makes you smile. Go with that one if you're stuck. If you're happy, you probably won't be going too far wrong. Now the second and third points tie in closely to each other for me. The second is momentum. Always try and keep moving forward with what it is that you want to do. Despite the setbacks on the way, as long as you keep trying and moving forward, you'll get there in the end. As Einstein said, Life's like riding a bicycle. To keep the balance, you must keep moving. Which leads us on to my third and my favourite quote from Finding Your Path. Your dreams don't have an expiration date. Take a deep breath and try again. Don't forget that through the difficult times. Keep the momentum going and no matter what pathway you choose, you'll get there in the end. On that positive note, I'll leave you with a final request from me. If this episode or any of the other 50 have been useful to you, you can thank me in two ways. One is to do my super quick survey at graduatejobpodcast.com slash survey. And the other is to leave me a review on iTunes. Now, Apple put lots of weight to iTunes reviews and it keeps me nice and high in the charts. So please fire up iTunes and leave me a review. I will love you forever. Now, one review to leave you with from iTunes is Sanjeev B in the US who said, getting so much value from these. Thanks, James. Keep it up. Many thanks, Sanjeev. Really appreciate you taking the time to leave me a message. So there you go. All that's left is to say do join me next week when we have a little bit of a recap of some of my favourite bits over the previous 51 episodes. I hope you enjoyed today, but more importantly, I hope you use it and apply it. See you next week.